Hello everyone and welcome to the video on 7.2 on the dot product. Our skill objectives for this video are one, find the dot product between two vectors. Number two, use the dot product to find the angle between two vectors. Number three, determine if two vectors are parallel or perpendicular. And the fourth thing is to use the dot product to calculate the amount of work associated with a physical problem. The conceptual objective on this one is understand the difference between scalar multiplication and the dot product. The thing that you have to remember with the dot product, it is, be, it is, a, it is the product between two vectors. Now, it is also often called the scalar product because the result is going to be a single value. It's going to be a number. So what we have is that the dot product of two vectors, u equal to the vector a, b, and v equal to the vector cd is given by u dot v equals a times c plus b times d. Again, that is read as u dot v. So for example here, I have a vector u equal to the vector 2, negative 3, and a vector v equal to the vector negative 4, negative 1. So if I take the dot product, if I take u dot v, that is going to be the product of the first component, so 2 times negative 4, plus the product of the second components, so negative 3 times negative 1, which gives us negative 8 plus 3, which actually gives us a negative 5. So that should be a negative 5 there. So our scalar product, or dot product in this case, is equal to negative 5. Please remember that when we talk about this, the dot product... is also equal to the scalar product. Now our book will refer to it as a dot product, but I do know other books and I've had other professors in college that did refer to it as a scalar product. Uh, there are properties associated with the dot product, uh, like the properties that we dealt with last time dealing with vector addition and scalar multiplication. First of all, uh, what we have is that when I take the dot product, u dot v is the same as v dot u. Um, and the, this was a mistake here, u dot, when I take a vector and dot it with itself, it is going to be equal to the magnitude of the vector squared. Um, if I dot a, uh, a vector with the zero vector, I will get the scalar, uh, I will get zero. And that in terms of, if I take a scalar times the dot product of two vectors, I can take that scalar and multiply it by each vector, or by one vector and dot it with the other. Uh, if I go through, if I am taking the sum of two vectors and dotting it with a third, I can distribute that, the vector w to inside so I get u dot v plus v dot or sorry u dot w plus v dot w and the same thing with it on the other side u dot the sum of v and w is going to be u dot v plus u dot w again please remember that these are properties of the dot product that we're going to be using to simplify some expressions in fact we're going to be doing it next what we have now here is we're looking at the, we're going to try to go through and come up with a way to calculate the angle between two vectors. So in this case, I have a vector u here and a vector v. And the uh, angle between them is theta, and that this vector here is the vector u minus v. Now, what I want to do is calculate, um, I want to go through and come up with a formula that will tell me this to, to give me, tell me to identify what that angle is. Sorry. So what I'm going to do on this one is I actually can go and use the law of cosines here to go and uh, relate the angle and these, these vectors and to vect in terms of their lengths. We know by the law of cosines that this vector here has a magnitude, it would be, um, the magnitude of u minus v, and then with the law of cosines, that is going to be that length squared, so it's going to be the magnitude of u minus v squared equals the magnitude of u squared plus the magnitude of v squared minus 2 times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of that angle. 
please remember that these here, these sides are formed by vectors, so their lengths are equal to the magnitude of that vector. Now, if I just look at the left-hand side, that's what LHS is, the left-hand side. <clears throat> I know this is the, uh, the, the magnitude of u minus v squared by one of our properties we had before is equal to the dot product of u minus v with itself. And with our distributive properties that we have, we can go through and distribute this to each of these in here, and then uh, distribute that. We can do some more simplification. The end result is that when I do this, I'm going to end up with u dot u minus 2 times u dot v plus v dot v. Or u dot u is the magnitude of u squared minus 2 times the dot product of u and v plus the magnitude of v squared. So that's all this left-hand side. So by replacing this in this whole expression, by replacing this with this piece, I get this, that the magnitude of u squared minus 2 times u dot v plus the magnitude of v squared equals the magnitude of u squared plus the magnitude of v squared minus 2 times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. Now at this point we can start simplifying. We know these things are equal so the properties of equality come into play. I know that you'll notice that they both have the magnitude of u squared on both sides so I know those will cancel out. They also have the magnitude of v squared on both sides so I know those will cancel out as well. And what I then have is negative 2 times u dot v equals negative 2 times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. And at this point, we just go through, divide both sides by that negative 2 magnitude of u times the magnitude of v u times the magnitude of v And what I'm going to get when I do that is all of this here drops off. The negative 2's drop off. And I have now that the cosine of theta is equal to u dot v, the dot product of u and v, over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And with that, we are then able to say if theta is an angle between u vectors u and vector v, where the, and then we know where the cosine of theta is going to be equal to u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, and where uh, the angle is going to be, theta is between 0 and 180 degrees. Now what I know in this case, I know a couple different things. Number one, if the vectors are parallel, the angle between them is going to be either 0 or 180 degrees. If the vectors are perpendicular, the angle between them is equal to 90 degrees. Let's take a look at an example here. In this case, we want to find an angle, the angle between vector u, which is 4, negative 2, and vector v, which is negative 1, negative 3. So the first, what I'm going to need to do is I need to remember on this that the cosine of the angle between those two is going to be u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So what I'm going to do now is find those three pieces. So what I'd like you to do right now is I want you to pause the video and I want you to identify the dot product, u dot v. I want you to identify the magnitude of u and I want you to identify the magnitude of v. So pause the video, do that, and once you're done, come back and we'll go through, the, we'll finish up this problem. Welcome back. In this case, you should have got that the dot product of u and v was 2. The magnitude of u came out to be the square root of 20, which if you simplify that square root, you get the 2 times the square root of 5. And the magnitude of v came out to be the square root of 10, which that one you can't simplify. So what I know with this, I then know that the cosine of theta is going to be u dot v, which is 2, over 2 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 10 which equals 2 over 
2 times the square root of 50, which you can reduce that. The 2 will drop off, so I get 1 over the square root of 50. Or I could rat simplify that. That is also 1 over 5 square root of 2. But regardless, at any point here, I could take uh, any of these that I have along here, and I just need to find the angle. So to find that, I know theta, in this case, is going to be the inverse cosine of, I'll just use 1 over the square root of 50. And so I take that, put it in my calculator, and I get that this one comes up to be that theta is basically uh, 81.86 or 81.87. 8, 7 degrees. So approximately, if they, a lot of times I tell you to round it to the nearest degree, so about 82 degrees would be the angle between those two vectors. Now, we've already talked about vectors being parallel and perpendicular, and that we know that um, if they are parallel, the angle between them is 180 degrees or zero. If they're perpendicular, the angle between them will be 90. Well, we have another term for perpendicular, and that term is orthogonal. Now, the reason we use that is because we can visualize vectors in two space and three space, but I've talked to you about how we can deal, we deal with vectors as well uh, in other dimensions besides that. So orthogonal gives us another term instead of perpendicular, because perpendicular really works with what we're talking about when we're dealing with two and three space. So we have this thing called orthogonal. And orthogonal vectors are, in our space, what we are look at right now, as perpendicular. Now, what happens with this? We know that if the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees, they're going to be perpendicular. Well, remember, think back to the unit circle. Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So in order for a, the vector for the angle between two vectors to be 90 degrees, that has to equal zero. And the only way that happens is when the top equals zero. In other words, when the dot product equals zero. So one of the things we have is that when we talk about vectors, we know two vectors are going to be orthogonal or perpendicular if and only if their dot product is zero. So what they're going to ask you to do is determine if two vectors are orthogonal. So in this case, I have two vectors, u and v, and I want to determine if they're orthogonal. So what I do is take the dot product. So I'm going to find u dot v, which we know that's going to be 12 times 3 plus 9 times a negative 4, which will come out to be 12 times 3 is 36 minus 36 which equals zero. So therefore, I know u and v are orthogonal. If the dot product came out to be anything other than zero, they are not orthogonal, and so therefore they would not be perpendicular. Next, we're going to deal with work, and this is where we get into the story problems, the application of the dot product. And what happens here is if we're going to, when we talk about work, you're moving, it means that you're taking, you're applying a force to an object and you're moving it from point A to point B. Now, what happens on this thing is if we have this thing, if this is going to be happening, we have an object that is, that is moved from point A to point B by a constant force, then the work associated with this displacement is W, work, equals the force vector times a displacement vector, no, or dotted with the displacement vector. So notice here, W is a scalar. It equals force vector dot the displacement vector. D is your displacement, F is your force vectors. Let's take a look at an example here. We have a sliding glass door is closed by pulling a cord with a constant force of 45 pounds at a constant angle of 55 degrees. The door is moved six feet to close it. How much work is done? So we know work equals force vector dotted with displacement vector. Now what do we have here is a diagram. Here is the door. This is where it has to go to close. 
So this length here is six feet. Our cord, we're using 45 pounds at a 55 degree angle, so that would be our, our uh, cord if you want to think of it that way. Now our force vector, remember a vector is equal to uh, its magnitude times, the, the horizontal component is the magnitude times the cosine of the direction angle, and the, the vertical component is the magnitude times the sine of the direction angle. So in this case, for my force vector, since I'm using a constant force of 45 pounds, that's our magnitude, and the angle is 55, I know my force vector is going to be 45 times the cosine of 55 degrees, and 45 times the sine of 55 degrees. So which that, when I plug that into the calculator, gives me 25.81 and uh, 36.86. Those have been rounded off. Now the question we have as now is what about my displacement vector? Well, in this case, and we can think of it as moving in either direction. In this case, we are going horizontally here, and I'm going to be moving off where it's going to be moving to the right. So in this case, right there, my direction angle is actually zero degrees. So, excuse me, I know my displacement vector D is going to be, my magnitude is six, six times the cosine of zero degrees, and six times the sine of zero degrees which that comes out just to be the vector 6, 0. And so if I want to find the work done, I know work, my work, is equal to the dot product of these two vectors. So it's going to be the dot product of 25.81, uh, 36.86, with the vector 6, 0. And so... What we do, pull out the calculator, and I can take 25.81 times 6. That's going to give me uh, 154.86 plus 0 times the 36. So we get so that comes out to be 154.86. Now the units that we have here. In this case, the units of this are just really going to be the product of the units in the problem. In this case, uh, the force is 45 pounds, the distance is in feet, so the units in this case are going to be in foot-pounds. Please take a look over this example. Make sure you're comfortable with all my calculations. Uh, make sure double check them. Make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Remember again, the units are going to be in this case the product of the units that you have in each individual problem. This does now conclude the video for the dot product. I'm sorry it is so late, but uh, I was not able to do it earlier. So with that, uh, I will see you in our next class where. We'll we will deal with this. Uh, there will be a video, a short video, dealing with the three-dimensional vectors, uh, which we'll talk about next time. So uh, with that, I hope everything's going well, and I'll see you in our next class.